I'm Dawn Reese with Hollywood Connections on Tan Talk Radio on Wednesdays from 6 to 7. I am super excited to be sitting here with this amazing man. And I'll tell you, it means a lot from my heart because my first interview was Michael Clark Duncan. And that's on YouTube, and I'll send that to you as well. And you are here at this amazing event, and you've been in some of our favorite movies as well as Green Mile. I can't even tell you. I mean, tell everybody who you are. Um, I'm William Sadler, actor guy from uh, every movie. Uh, every movie, every movie that was made in the Bill and Ted's Adventure, Bogus Journey, oh, Bogus, Bogus Journey, Bogus Journey. Oh, that's right. And the Shawshank Redemption. That and, was an amazing you know, film. And and Die Hard Two and right. Iron Man Three and. Well, you know, a lot of people ask, "Who do you remember your first break when you first got your break?" The very first. I did an episode. I came in and auditioned for the very, very, very first episode of Tales from the Crypt. Okay. Right? And it was a, it, it, it was a character named Talbot. Okay. And what I auditioned for was the guy at the end of the TV show. It's a little half-hour TV show. The guy at the end who comes in and arrests him. and says, Mr. Talbot, you're under arrest. You have the right to remain silent. I did the audition, and... I turned to the casting woman and I said, um, what's up with the role of Talbot? The, the killer, he's, the, he's an executioner who gets laid off and goes on a, goes on a rampage killing people on his own. Um, and she said, oh, we're going to get someone famous for that. We're going to, John Malkovich or, you know, Kurt Russell or someone. And I said, oh, and I left. I got halfway across the parking lot and this casting woman, Karen Ray was her name, leaned out the window and said, Bill, come back. And she handed me the pages, the sides, said, come back on Monday, I'll put you on tape. I came back on Monday, they put me on tape. I got the job of Talbot. Walter Hill was the director, but the other three producers were Joel Silver, Dick Donner, and Robert Zemeckis. Okay. Right? I went, I went on to do movies with all of those people. Um, Die Hard 2 was the next thing that Joel Silver did. Um, one of the writers on Tales from the Crypt was Frank Darabont, who then cast me in The Shawshank Redemption and The Mist and The Green Mile. Um, did you have an agent at that time, or did you oh, do it yourself, or who was your agent? Or you, how did, I'm going to back up as well. How did you get your first agent? Oh, Jesus. Now we're going back. <laughs> the reason for it, because a lot of people, the, you know, film directors take them from casting directors, and some don't have them. And, of course, you do have to have one to get those big roles as well. The ad well, I got my first agent. I was doing theater in New York. I was, I was in the Shakespeare in the Park. So I did about... I did about 11 years of theater in New York. That's important. People don't realize you're not overnight success. This is like Joe Jackson, Michael's dad said, get out there, be known, and strike. And it's not drive through McDonald's, order famous. You've paid your dues. Right, right. No, it was years and years of theater. And that was after the years of training. It was theater in New York and regional, you know, regional theater around the area, the Long Wharf and... The Yale Rep, and so on, the New York Shakespeare Festival. But anyway, I started asking other actors that I was working with who had agents, okay. have they seen the show that we were in? <clears throat> and if they had, would you mind if I contacted them? And because then they would have just seen me in something, and it would be an easier door to get through. So you did a lot of networking as well. I mean, I tried, but I it, it's it wasn't easy then, and a lot of them weren't interested. Most of them said, "When you're in something, if you're in something else, we have a really big role. Call me, um, and I'll come and see it." And in fact, later that first year, this was like my first year in New York. How old were you about? Oh. What was I, 30? No, it's 20, 28, something like that. 
A lot of people think they're too old to go into acting at certain ages. They go, oh, I'm 20, I'm too old, I'm 25. You're about 28, and here you are just starting. Well, yeah, but I had but I'd started in, I started at the age of 18 acting in plays. Then I did four years at Geneseo. I studied it for four years at Geneseo. Then I got a Master of Fine Arts in it at Cornell, and then I started the 11 years of theater in New York. So Got your documentary. <laughs> so this is a, so there was a buttload of uh, theater. It was all you know off off Broadway and then off Broadway and then finally on Broadway. But I got the agent by inviting them to see me do an off off Broadway play in the basement of a church, and I had a great role. She was impressed, and uh, this is. Um, Marilyn Zatmary of the Gage Group. And uh, that was my first agent. Well, I, I know I want to talk more. I, I, I'm intrigued. I, I can't wait. I'm not even doing a half hour show with you on Tan Talk. Oh. <laughs> 20 minute show. Another time then. I do appreciate it. What advice would you give new actors out there that would like to make it in this business? And they're, you know, they're trying so hard and they just want to be an extra in a movie. But you've gotten theater. That was a big point. What, what, where did you take theater in New York? Can I ask you? I, I studied, I actually studied it. I said, I went to, I got, I did it for four years at you know, an undergraduate college at Geneseo. But then I, then I got a scholarship to get it, to study nothing but acting for two years at Cornell and get a master's. Um, you have to study, if you're serious about it, you have to get some training. And then I, I, I always suggest people do theater, do theater, because and work with I mean work with the best people you can, but that's where you that's where you get the chops. Okay. By the time if you go straight in if you go straight to Hollywood, you'll work you know one day as an extra on this and and then two months later you'll do two days on that TV show and it's. There's, it's not enough time doing it to get good at anything and the directors don't have no one has time to help you there's no rehearsal so if you don't if you can't figure out what to do with this role and these words what great advice and I I know yeah so I always suggest you know do as much theater as you can before you turn your attention to the movies okay. I know my husband's saying, Dad, I need to bring this stand. And uh, just one more, what would you like to do that you haven't done yet? And actually think about that, because we'll bring him on the air. And, uh, a musical. A musical. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a reason I haven't done a musical. Oh, I know. He's a singer. But. I know. But we're going to continue this. We didn't bring our stand. And he's like, Mr. Statue of Liberty, thank you so much. So very much for your time. It's been really a pleasure. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Sorry, Bert. Bye.